Welcome to r slash I do work here lady, where we share stories about employees that are mistaken for customers. And for today, we have four incredible stories. So subscribe, hit the like button, and here we go. The first story is, it's not a child discount, I work here. I'm so lucky and get to work a dream part-time job teaching little kids how to ski. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen, and I love seeing them smile the first time I take them up the bunny hill at the end of a lesson. Seriously, if you can get this job, get it. I also happen to get a very good employee discount, which is nice because after a full day, six-ish lessons, I'm exhausted. Kids are fun, but I'm tall, so holding them upright while walking backwards in the nutcase tilt my expert boots have does a number on my back. I like to reward myself with a chocolate bar, a hot dog, a pop after a full day of work, using the aforementioned amazing discount while I wait for my mom to come and pick me up. It had been a nice warmish day, like negative 10 to negative 5 Celsius and sunny all day long. So I had a full day of lessons with hyperactive youngsters. It was so busy that I hadn't bothered taking anyone up to the top of the hill, as even in my first lesson, the instructor fast lane was a bit too long, and it just got worse as the day went on. Also, the kids after my first lesson were very young, and some of them have never skied before, so I wasn't holding them back from anything, just trying to get across how insanely busy it was. I think everyone on a 100 kilometer radius was on the hill and booking last minute lessons. Needless to say, the cafeteria was just as packed. I was still standing in line for my hot dog when I got my mom's text saying she was parking. I should preface this by saying that there were more instructors this year than there were coats for the instructors, so I was borrowing one from one of the managers on vacation, leading to a complete confusion among parents because there was a name tag on it that was not my name and had to turn it in after my last lesson every day, meaning I was wearing my yellow striped jacket that I think is actually a child's double XL because of how short it is. But it was second hand and is an expensive brand and fits so who cares. I finally get to the checkout and grab my chocolate bar as I hand the cashier my employee badge, which looks very similar to a seasonal pass, so that she can apply my discount. I should also mention that the cafeteria area is all, so we were packed like sardines, but it was not so near the cashiers, so I'm not really sure why this lady was standing close enough to me to read the discount on the bill I was handed. I'm paranoid and always check it before leaving. Big mistake. This woman shoves her kid up right into me and hands her a card saying, you pay, then turns to the cashier and says, we want the child discount, in a sickly sweet voice. I'm confused. The cashier is confused. The other instructors in front of me are confused. We're a ski hill known for our ski school. It would go out of business if there were a child discount. The cashier finally says, we don't have a child discount. Yes, you do, the lady says, shoving her terrified kid, my guess is nine years old, towards the counter. She then points at me. She got the child discount. I'm sorry, ma'am, but she works here. No, she doesn't. The lady, from here on L, points to the other instructors. They do. This child's not even old enough to work here. I kind of nod and shrug and eat my hot dog. This isn't really my problem. At least, I didn't think so. And I wasn't quite ready to leave yet, as I needed some hands to get my skis into our car. I then go stand by a wall, because there was no sitting space left, as the cashier, from here on C, brings up the total. Lady, where's the discount? Cashier, calmly, I told you there is no discount. Lady waves arms like a mad person and points to me stuffing my face. She got one, my daughter should get one too. Customer, she works here. Lady, no she does not. I finally get annoyed with this and tell her that I do in fact work here, as an instructor. Lady, no you do not. You're too young to work here, and anyone can see that you're lying. You're not wearing an instructor's coat. Me, yeah, cause I clocked out. Lady, see, you aren't working. I want the child discount. Cashier, there is no child discount. Lady, then what discount did she get? Points an accusatory finger at me. Cashier, getting really annoyed. The employee one. Lady, but she said she isn't working. At this point, the people behind her are pretty upset, and some are telling her to pay and move on. The lady starts pointing at my employee card that's hanging between my pop and chocolate and starts saying that it's just like her kid's pass. I'm now at the end of my wits and show her where it says employee on the card. She turns red, then demands that I give it to her for a child to use. I simply inform her that I'm not allowed to share it with anyone and leave. Before you ask, I have no idea what happened next. I applied late, part of why I didn't get my own jacket and didn't know if this needed to be reported or not, but no one got hurt and I assume she paid and went on her unmerry way. I never saw her again. The second story is, can I please just have a uniform that makes it clear I work here? Kind of a reverse to the old I don't work here lady. An old summer job of mine when I was living in the US, it seemed like every week I couldn't convince someone that I worked there. This happened quite often, and there's not one big crazy blow up, but these are some of my favorite mildly confused people. 
Don't take this to be that anyone in it was that mean or rude, just usually caught off guard it seemed. A little background. I'm American born, but grew up most of my childhood in Ireland and some in Scotland and have moved about between the three constantly throughout my life. So I'm Irish-ish and slightly American-ish and have a distinctly not American accent. In Scotland I'm told I sound Irish, told in Ireland I sound Scottish, and in American that I sound European, British, or foreign. Yeah, it's a cluster F trying to explain this to people, so I usually just say I'm Irish-ish. I think this was a big part of the confusion, that someone with a non-American accent was an employee and not a tourist at a tourist destination. There were people that were a pain about it in more unpleasant ways, but those don't make for good stories, and I'm used to that behavior regardless. This all is made more difficult because my uniform looked irresponsibly similar to some of the gift shop shirts, only differentiated by having a zoological department logo and my name printed fairly small on the chest. It was a nice shirt and I still wear it sometimes, but it doesn't really communicate too well that I'm an employee there. I have an Irish name, so many Americans don't even recognize it as a name tag, just adding to the confusion of the situation. So, this job, I was caring for mostly reptiles and amphibians at a zoological institution. Many of the habitats under my care were pretty poorly set up, in that there isn't a back area for the keepers to do their work from. Instead, we were to go out into the public area and do the work from there, putting in food, checking animals' health, etc. This naturally draws a crowd, and I answered their questions when I felt it was appropriate. Other times, just pointed to the signage and explained that I was just there to care for the animals, or pointed them towards presenters, who had the scripted pre-approved answers. Scooping poop in the tortoise habit one day, a family came up to me. It's a big pen enclosure, not a normal cage or tank type setup, so there was always confusion about whether it's a petting zoo type exhibit. There were signs not to touch, but reading is too difficult when there's an animal to look at. One of the kids, reaching a hand through the fence, Whoa, that's a huge turtle. I want to pet it. Me, oh, you probably shouldn't pet the tortoise. Presumably the dad. Why not? You're in there. Me, continuing to have such tremendous fun picking up runny tortoise SH and wanting to exclude his children from this joy. Well, I'm cleaning up after him and I'm careful not to get too close to that beak. Him, so why can't my kids go in there? Me, completely lost as to how this was a difficult concept. This is a habitat with a tortoise that doesn't want to be disturbed and might get angry if it is disturbed. Him, but you can go in there? Me, bewildered and pointing at my shirt and pooper scooper. Well, I'm his keeper. Him, we just want to go in there with the turtle and if you're the zookeeper, why don't you have a name tag or a uniform? Me, pointing more forcefully at my name. This is my name tag and uniform, and you can't come into a habitat with the animals. Him, I'm gonna go find an actual zookeeper that works here. I shrug and go about my work, the family huffing off to confuse someone else. They came back a few minutes later with one of my colleagues, who confirms to them that that British tourist is indeed an employee and is not trespassing in a habitat. Mind you, this colleague is in the same uniform as me. One day while rotating the soil in the three-banded armadillo habitat, because armadillos look like reptiles, so obviously the reptile lad should be the one to take care for them. A guy approached me with his kid. He seemed somehow to be fine with me being in the habitat, but was somehow unclear that I work there. Him, you really shouldn't touch those, they carry leprosy. Me, no, that's just nine-banded armadillos. These three-banded armadillos are healthy. Him, maybe you should ask one of the zookeepers. Armadillos definitely carry leprosy. Me, some do, but these ones in their species don't. Him, I don't know about that. You should ask someone that knows about armadillos. They've ripped up my yard as long as I can remember, and some have leprosy. Me, well, as their keeper, I can assure you they're healthy, and I won't catch anything from them. Him, mm-hmm. A clear look that he doesn't believe me and walks off. One lady was very impressed that I know about axolotls, being that I'm not American. I was observing some of the animals for behavioral notes, so to be fair, it did somewhat look like I was just a customer guest. Her, oh wow, so cute. Which, by the way, they are. Looking over to me, why do you think they have those flap things? Me, those are their gills. It's normal in salamander's aquatic form. Her, surprised. Hmm, interesting. So they change to be on land later and lose them? Me, well, most salamanders will, but axolotls stay aquatic for their life, so they keep the gills. Her, how do you know all this? It's so nice you're learning about American animals. They're Mexican, so they are North American, but I don't think that's what she meant. Me, pointing at my shirt. Ha, huh, I'd hope I'd know about them. I'm their zookeeper. Her, oh, <laughs> that would be too funny. Me, but I am. Her, you know, I've heard about that dry British humor. Me, uh... The third story is, you aren't cops, right? You just try to screw me, right? First, sorry for my bad English. I'm not used to writing it, and this is my first Reddit story, so please be a little patient with me. 
This actually didn't happen to me, but to my brother, who used to work for the police in Berlin, Germany. One day my brother and his colleagues had to go out undercover to drive through the streets of Berlin and looking for people breaking the law. My brother was the only one who looked like a German, the others were Arabic, Turkish and Slavic. They decided when they're undercover they should overact it, so as they're dressed up, they look like they could be someone who the police would take a closer look at. They had to use an old Opel Corsa from the 90s. They stopped at a traffic light with this trashy old Opel. On the left side of them, there stopped a young 20-ish Arabic guy in his sparkling BMW and tried to encourage my brother to race him. My brother ignored this, thinking it wasn't worth their time, and let him speed off as the traffic lights went green. As they stopped at the next traffic light, the same guy in his BMW tried to encourage my brother to race him again. But now he and his colleagues had none of it. The colleague on the back seat grabbed the signaling disc, moving it slowly upward so it appeared in the window. To see his expression of disbelief in his face was way priceless. The guy pulled over to the side of the street, and my brother and his colleague stopped right behind him, got out of the car and walked to the window of the car. Cast. B equals my brother. A equals young 20-ish Arabic guy. B. Driver's license and car documents, please. A. Wait, you aren't cops, right? B. Yes, we are. A. No, 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 you're not. You can't be. B. Sure, we're cops. A. But you look like some Kanakin. German word used to describe people mostly of the Middle East, in a disrespectful manner. You just try to screw me, right? B. Nope, we're cops. My brother pulled out his official ID. A. Unbelievable. A stuttered. He gave my brother his driver's license and the car documents. A. How am I supposed to tell who's a cop and who's not? You could see how desperate he was. B. You're not supposed to tell who's a police officer or not. That's why we're dressed like this. My brother handed over the documents. B. Since this is your first day after getting the driver's license, we'll be a bit generous and just tell you not to drive reckless again. A. Thanks and sorry. B. And don't forget, we're everywhere. And the last story is, just trying to help a customer while I'm on break. So, for those of you who haven't read my post before, I work in McDonald's as a dining area cleaner and have done for about four years now. Every time I go on break, I normally put on a coat or jacket, go for a smoke and then get some food from the store. This was tonight and about 7 hours ago as I couldn't post while I was working. I was working a pretty alright shift and after a few hours work I went to get my break. I had my smoke then came in to get my food. The store was pretty busy at this point so I had to wait a short while for my coworkers to make it and hand it to me. I was wearing a black zip up jumper over my uniform which comes down to just below my belt line covering up the McDonald's logo on my trousers. After about 5 minutes of waiting I hear the woman standing next to me start to complain. Ugh, I've been waiting for over 30 minutes. Where's my food? And of course, being the guy I am, I offer to help her even though I'm on break. May I see your receipt, ma'am? What? No. Why would I show a stranger? It's not like you're one of these bees that work here anyway. After hearing that, I felt myself smirk, and I couldn't help but chuckle slightly as I unzipped the top half of my jumper to show her my uniform underneath. Yes, ma'am, because it's not like I'm on my break and willing to give up my free time to help you out rather than making sure I eat. At this point she was flustered and started to stutter out a few words. I I'm sorry, could you please help me? I chuckled again as right at that moment one of my coworkers handed me my food. Sorry ma'am but like I said, I'm on break. Maybe ask one of my B coworkers if they can assist you. Have a nice day. Safe to say I thoroughly enjoyed the rest of my break with a smile on my face. Thank you for watching. Bye.